Welcome to the Performance Enhancing Podcast. It's like steroids for your brain. A podcast for people that want the best info but just don't have the time. Get your podcast fix with the Cliff Notes versions of your favorite podcasts. No fluff, just the actionable golden nuggets. Having this much knowledge at your fingertips should be downright illegal. So get ready for another dose of Performance Enhancing Podcast with Satori Prime. Here's your host, Elon Ferdman. All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Slightly different version, number two of uh, Beer Talk with Satori Prime. 2.0. We've gone by coastal. We've gone by coastal. We. The problem is that everyone wanted another episode so quickly. We didn't have you know guy visiting me in the cards just yet, and we were like, we got to figure out another way. Otherwise, these are going to be far and few between. So, Broski, virtual cheers. Pink. What are you drinking? I'm drinking a, I don't know if you can see that. That is a Founders Breakfast Stout. Yeah, I'm clicking my thing over here. All there. sorts of deliciousness. Let me just turn on my uh, little and, thing uh, here. To disappoint all our beer lovers, I'm drinking a, a premium ginger beer. Doesn't get more California than that. And uh, you guys have my word. That uh, when this is over, I will go out and go get some real manly beer. But right now, this is what we're working with. I don't know. I don't know what's happening to me. This Cal- California is ruining my life. Well, anyway, while a guy is drinking his fruity ginger beer, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, <laughs> I know you took the lead last time, and I just wanted to kind of start a different type of conversation this time because I had a. Pretty awesome day yesterday. I uh, actually hung out with Jay Kubisak and Stuart Ross and, and met uh, two amazing guys, uh, Brian and Jason, who are probably the biggest media buy guys uh, in the world, responsible for probably every huge, massive launch that has happened in the last 10 years. Um, all the Mike Dillard stuff, Ryan Dice stuff, uh, health and fitness stuff, Truth About Abs. I mean, they've literally done it all. So, it was amazing. Now, I was literally now getting there. 55 emails that ask you who are these two guys and how do I hire them. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Well, now I'm connected to them, so we'll see. But uh, it, what was amazing to me is, God, you came back from an event. I don't even remember when it was. I think you went to Costa Rica, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you came back and you said, you know, what we're missing is titles, and you kind of gave me the relationship manager tag. And I think something really shifted then. And what I noticed yesterday is, while we teach people all the technical stuff and the mindset stuff and all that, yesterday it made me realize how important the networks are and how important having these connections and building these relationships with like-minded people who have similar visions, who have uh, success and mastery in different arenas than us. Yeah. Yeah. And how when we figure out a way to work together, it, it's like explosive. So I'm just curious to see from your perspective, uh, and then I'll share my own perspective, but what's your take on the whole networking, building relationships, you know, where do you see it on the scale of importance in building your business, et cetera? I think like many things in life, uh, things t- tend to shift as you grow older and, and what was important. When you were younger, um, it's funny if they actually they do these studies and they show you like top five things that are most important to you when you're young, and then they do like top five things that are most important to you when you're old, and the lists lists are literally switch places. Yeah. Um, but you know that's one of those things, uh, and we mentioned on last beer talk, just immigrant mentality. Lon and I are they're like, do it, throw it on our back, we'll push through, we don't need anybody, that kind of mentality. And I I actually say as much as it serves us in building. Our personal stuff, it underserves us greatly in our ability to uh, grow our business. Um, So I remember coming back from that event, and I remember giving you that title. And from the moment I gave you that title, so just to give a little background, I realized in corporate structure, everyone's got titles, which puts them into a distinction of what their responsibilities are. But when you're building an online business, you're just a home business owner, and that can mean 5,000 different things. So I said, let's at least come up with a few things. And uh, I'm reading a really great book called Get a Grip right now. And they talk about integrators versus um, visionaries, right? So I would say Elon, it's not that we both don't have those aspects to us, but Elon's more of the visionary. I'm more of the integrator in our particular business, how we have it set up. So, uh, you know, one of the things that came clear to me is we don't have clear cut responsibilities. And because of that, when things come through the pipeline, 
you don't know exactly what to do. I don't know exactly what to do. And now here we are like two years later, something comes to the pipeline. We don't even talk and the other person's just doing it. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I love that. Right. So um, just to take it back to your question. So when it came to relationship building, I don't think that was really a priority for us until the last six months. Um, we're not big networkers. I was a wallflower growing up, you know, I would go to parties and like kind of lay back. Elon's a little bit more uh, verbose in his approach. Um, but it just wasn't, it, you know, we don't like the rah-rah mentality. So we kind of associate networking with network marketing and we get turned off by that. Um, but I, I think when we started being put, we got into a really high end mastermind group in the last six months. And it was like, we always tell people like-minded, you know, be around like-minded people who are up to what you're up to. And what we found is a group of business people that are not just about making money, but are also about making a difference. And for Elon and I, that's a major priority. So we struggle when we're in a networking uh, group that's just about money. And, and there's nothing wrong with, with concentrating on making money. We love making money, but we want to sleep at night with how we're doing it. And we want to know that we're doing good in the world while we're making that money. So it's important to us. So when we got into this group, it made us a lot more comfortable, I think, with pursuing business relationships. Uh, and I finding that, you know, all these amazing people are up to incredible things anyway, uh, which is like, you know, take, take the blinders off and figure out what's happening around you. But I think since then, noticing that putting the right people in the right seats for your company gives you your time back, allows you to leverage things in a different way, to scale your business in a way that you can possibly scale it yourself. And ultimately, whether people know how to do something, you know how to do better than you, which is fantastic if you can find those people, or even if they could do it 80 to 90% as well as you can, and what you're getting back is your time, so you can concentrate on the aspects of your business that are really making the difference. Uh, I think that's been the most crucial lessons for us in the last six months, right? Give or take. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think th there's another side and maybe just for me from, from kind of being in the, the front of this, <clears throat> there's something amazing that occurs when you put yourself out there and surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. And, you, you know, they always say, like, you want to grow and develop. B, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to upgrade your network. <laughs> and we got into this mastermind and, you know, there's multiple seven, even eight figure earners in this group. And what was incredible, the, the group is predicated on the fact that everyone is there, not because of how much money they made or et cetera. Like you have to have obviously a certain level of success to be allowed into this mastermind. But the major point is, that everyone wants to contribute to each other and help each other grow. And more than that, people are out there trying to make a difference in the world, like to some add some value and good and not just be like, you know, I'm a douchey stockbroker, not whatever, not to judge anybody, but like, um, that's out there just to like rape and pillage and make as much money as they can. And I think what was amazing for me and a big, big mental shift that I had was that I could still offer these people value. These like eight figure earners were still coming to me for advice about doing certain things and to Guy as well. And we would share our knowledge around Facebook and building businesses online and how we, and you know, it makes you aware of what it is that you have, right? And then that allows me to go out and speak to others knowing the kind of value that I am for the world. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that shift, like, like just having that different mindset has been monumental for me. Really, yeah. really monumental. And that's, and look, and then we talked about this again last time, you know, the get on the wheel of increasing your belief, taking more action, getting more results, which increases your belief, networking with the right people and seeing, we've always seen that you don't really learn while you're learning, you learn while you're teaching, right? Yeah. When, you, when, you, when it gets into your bones, I mean, when it gets ingrained into the system is normally when you teach because teaching is a recognition of being able to pass on knowledge to someone, of passing on wisdom to someone and having them obtain that as well. When you do that is when you can finally see, wow, I, I actually know this stuff that I could teach it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's kind of the same thing when you're in a network where people have surpassed where you imagine that you are. And it's always like that. Um, and you could still have value added there. Your belief in what you're doing is increasing exponentially. And that allows you to look at yourself and your business and what you're capable of and what you can be providing as far as value to other people who are not even at that stage 
in a completely different lens than you were looking at it before. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. A hundred percent. And I think it's also interesting. Like I think the big block for a lot of people is what do I have to offer? I don't belong. What right do I have to even speak to this person? And I remember even when we started, remember like you walked up to Jay Kubisak for the first time and like, you were like, Oh my God, Oh my God, it's Jay Kubisak. Right. And like, here we are, you know, like hanging out with him and you know, it, it just <sighs> give up that these people like you, you know, people have certain perspective of us when we're at events, they're always coming to us. And like, I think guy and I have a disposition where we literally make ourselves very accessible and like, we don't ever put ourselves above anyone because we really don't feel that way. Uh, we, we were in the same positions that most people start in. Uh, we had the same exact experiences. We don't think we're better than anyone. You know, but what I tell people is like, we're just slightly farther along that path. Like we didn't, you know, we have to deal with the same shit that most other people are dealing with. So don't ever think that someone is unapproachable. And I'll tell you right now, I started a podcast pretty recently and I, I read a ton of books and, and watch a lot of videos and listen to a lot of other podcasts. And I had to give up certain conversations and, and guy will attest to this. I literally reached out to authors of books who are like, you know, Amazon best selling authors, right? And I reach out to them and I'm like, Hey, I have this podcast, um, talking about performance enhancing and like having people live a peak potential. Would you want to interview? And guys, I've asked about five or six people so far for interviews. Guess how many no's I've gotten? That many. Every single person has said yes. And what's fascinating is no one's asked like who you're listeners are or how many downloads you have because at the end of the day they want to have great conversations with great people and get their message out there and i think that's from everyone i've met like on the you know top of the mountain quote unquote everyone is everyone got there because they have a certain personality mm -hmm. they're generous they're humble they're servants they, they believe in the greater good and i'm yet to meet i mean I guess I don't hang out with them, but like there aren't that many douchey people uh, at the top of the mountain is, has been my experience. I'm sure there are some douchey people. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I've heard stories. <laughs> I mean, we look, it's, don't not, them. it's not who we spend time with. It's not who we attract. I mean, uh, I'll tell you in a personal experience, like for, for people we first came into the industry with and we looked up to, you know, down the line, you find out that the message they were preaching was not all that accurate and there was underlying things that they were investing in uh, I'll tell you even from I've been out in California for about a year now I got thrown into a group of uh, people you know whether I wanted to or not just by function of who I did know out here that at the moment I got here I just was like this was my group of friends out here you know and when I got here I would say that I was like a group of 30 people and uh, it's interesting because as relationships unfold, you discover other things. I didn't want to turn the conversation negative, but you find out what you are and aren't looking for. And that's, I think, in life and business and relationships. And business is relationships, right? Are and are not looking for. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what you know, you've discovered, right? So the people I knew a year ago are not the people I spend time with today. And it's not like they did anything wrong or there's anything wrong with them. Just not what I want in my life. Uh, and I think that's something as you get older you do easier, you know, you don't look at it like this big, huge decision. Oh, I got to cut this person off and yeah, it, it flows a lot easier. So I think with business is the same thing. You, it's like going to a new country or like going to a new or moving to a new place. You got to find your own and people who support the conversation that you say that you are, the goals that you say that you're up to. Um, you know, we've been extremely fortunate to uh, find ourselves in positions uh, consistently that have made a difference for our business. So, but look, wherever you are in your business, um, wherever you are in your life, whatever it is that you're up to, you're, you're, you are, I promise you, you are a response stimulus machine and, uh, you're responding very heavily to your environment. Uh, and it's your choice how that response is going to go. And, uh, and what I mean by that is, when you set up your environment to have you respond 
to the best of your ability, meaning like when you are at a peak or a flow state, there is some kind of environment that's impacting and creating that flow state. Look in ways in which you could put people around you. Look in ways in which you can create circumstances that will continuously put you into that flow state. Uh, I don't know about you. How far have you got into Rise of the Superman? I'm, uh, well, it's on Audible, so I just finished uh, the 10th chapter. Okay, so I'm pretty far into it, too. I mean, absolutely fascinating stuff. Right. Uh, and it's funny because, you know, we talked about it last time, too, and we kind of goffed at it, you know, like, oh, uh, could you ever be free of your circumstances? And the thing is, it's like, I, I think my position on it used to be like, yes, I want to feel good, free of my circumstances. And I'm coming to the understanding that that's probably never going to happen, uh, ever. And and even when it does happen, it's funny because you're in a flow state is when you feel like you're free of your circumstances, but what created the state for you to feel free of your circumstances is your circumstance. circumstance. So, <laughs> and now after like, you know, you're listening to this book, we've been listening to, uh, what's the Stephen Covey? Is that his name? Stephen, uh, it's Stephen Cutler. Stephen Cutler, that's right. And uh, it's called The Rise of Superman. I'm actually going to have him uh, on an interview April 7th, which I'm like, this is, this is one of the guys, right? So like I'm reading this book and I'm absolutely fascinated <laughs> by this book. And I think to myself, heck, what do I have to lose, right? The, the worst thing he can say is no, right? Reached out to him instantly. He was like, absolutely, I'd love to. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to get to have an hour-long conversation with him and pick his brain. So if you guys are reading the book or have any questions, please fire him off. Like, I cannot wait to pick this guy's brain. Yeah, I think I'm going to join you for that one. So, so that's yeah. super cool. But the book is, you know, amazing. And what you realize is, uh, you know, specifically there's a story of uh, this amazing climber and how he starts base jumping and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, he's like, yeah, you can reach that with meditation. He's like, I can do hours worth of meditation and experiences for 15 seconds he goes, or I could jump off a cliff and experience it instantly, and it'll last for days. So it's just like he's a guy who's understood for me to get into peak state, for me to get into flow. I have to go through these extreme circumstances. He doesn't even like heights. He doesn't even yeah, like that's the crazy part. You ask him what his motivation is, he goes, not to climb the rock. His motivation is flow state. There's He's, a, he's addicted to it, right? But so everybody is. We all have these fleeting moments of beauty in our lives that we – literally strive for in between all the muck right that happens in life because life is chaotic and messy and sloppy and nobody really knows what the hell they're doing as much as they seem like they do um and we're all just trying to make make it you know whatever that means so it's really cool to hear these guys they found an access point to it and it's being studied and it's being brought to hopefully more practical purposes but the truth is no matter how practical they make it you pretty much need to be in a state where you're risking your life. Well, so interestingly enough, like as you go through the book, not hopefully not to ruin anything for you, but he starts kind of looking at, well, how do we do this in our day-to-day -day lives, right? Yeah. And so for human beings, risk, having something at risk is, is the number one catalyst for having to go into peak state because basically our brains are programmed to survive. When the brain senses risk, of death, for example, then it has to do things in a very different way than it normally processes. So like a lot of the time, your prefrontal cortex, which is over here, is doing most of the judging, thinking, analyzing. That's like what we call the voice in our head. Yeah. Well, these guys experience a different voice, a voice that when it says do X, you do X because they're so connected to source at that moment. Now, entrepreneurs, interestingly enough, we are all risk takers. So when you go outside of, you know, the norm or cultural or societal values, which is go to school, become a worker, blah, 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 like to go off on your own path, to start your own thing, that's risky. To the brain, that's survival. That's life or death, right? It, you don't necessarily have to jump off a cliff to experience that. And guy, you know, like as I'm reading the book, I'm realizing more and more we put ourselves in flow states. It was the reason we were able to work for 16 hour days yeah. and be, you know, you lose sense of time. Sure. You lose sense of self. You, you are just so it's like in, in uh, Silicon Valley, by the way, was built on flow state. 
uh, video game uh, market built on flow state. Video gamers are, are, that's why they're so addicted to games. Video game companies try to get people into flow and, and vice versa. So when in that movie, um, what was it Social Network? Where he's like, don't talk to him. He's plugged in, right? Yeah. Is that what, what he says? Yeah. Like he's 36 hours and just like at a computer, tick, 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 tick. We've had that experience. For and sure. I think it, it, it's fascinating where it's like, you know, in DJing, I've had it. In skiing, I've had it. it, it, it we've all experienced it. Now, the, mat, the question is, how do we experience it more often? Because if you can perform work at peak state, they're doing studies where, uh, you know, people in finance, for example, are producing five times the amount of work in flow that's, that a normal worker is. Yeah. So that theoretically means you can show up to work on Monday, be in flow, knock out your entire week's worth of work, not show up for the rest of the week, and no one will know the difference because you've completed the amount of work that your other employees have. If you can be there twice a week, now you're going to be like the superstar of the company mm -hmm. in that state. So I'm not saying it's like the easiest thing to get into, but being an entrepreneur in its own right is enough risk. Um, for someone you say like you are a wallflower, right? For someone who's shy to be at a bar and walk up to a girl, that's enough to put you in flow state because it, it's such a risk for you. It's, like, it's like a fight of everything you believe. Absolutely. I think, I think it's fascinating because I think about flow state situations and this is when I said in the book, I was like, duh, um, is that it's a state of no thought. It's a state yeah. of, pure, it's a state of pure intuition. And that's why a lot of times when people say they try to give me, you know, they try to get baseline numbers from us on like marketing and stuff. I'm like, I can't tell you where these decisions are coming from. I'm like, I just know that that's going to work. I'm like, it's not based on anything. It's purely intuitive, but it yeah. came from the, the, you know, all that experience, all that banging your head into the wall, like um, failing miserably, doing all that stuff over and over again, just to have that, that level of intuition at any level. Um, but what's interesting is, so now that I'm thinking about it, even when we play tennis or you get into flow and you're, we call it like you're hot or you're on and you'll talk to like a In basketball zone. You talk to an NFL or basketball player and they'll say, everyone seems smaller. The hoop gets bigger. You know, like I feel like I'm playing against children. That kind of thing is, again, they're in flow state. But what's interesting, I thought, in the biology of it is that your, your level of cognition hasn't gone up. It's gone down. Is that less parts of the brain are working. The part that's all logic and is not muddling the information. It's not being filtered through that garbage. So you're yeah. just getting pure pure info and I've definitely had states like that in my life before, but it's definitely interesting to put um, focus on it and see when it arises for you and what you need to do that extreme sport athletes just found a way to induce it at basically beck and call. But they have well, they, they put themselves in situations where if they're not in flow state, they don't survive. Yeah. Well, if an entrepreneur, if your business fails, even though to the brain, there's really no difference. That's why like physio, physiologically and chemically in the brain, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. But like there's still that part of you where like, okay, so, you know, the business goes under, like you're going to be upset and, you know, whatever. But like your life doesn't end. A guy doesn't come to your house and cuts off your head if your business goes under. For sure. these guys to make it down a mountain – or to go through these crazy whitewater rapid things or, or, you know, climb these mountains, like one wrong move, they're dead. Like it's not even a if, and, or, but. So, and just to play the, like a little, not the opposite side of that, but just, you know, a little different spin on it. It's interesting because oftentimes when I've told the story of our business and how I got started and the way that it felt to me, I usually would describe it as it was this or death. How many yeah. times have you heard me say that, right? So I remember how different I started feeling when I got the business going, but I remember how I induced it also and how many times have I told people don't do this, but it's funny because maybe the way to do it really is to do it this way. So I'll just tell you like a very short part of the story, guys. So like I had no money when I got started. Elon and I owned a bank. We lost everything. When I got this business going, I think I had about four or $500 in the bank, which was about enough to just get me into an opportunity at that time. Um, but what I did have was credit card credit cards that I hadn't used for two years and about $40,000 worth of credit card uh, um, 
what's it called? Not debt, but whatever. About, like you had available balance. I had a balance of $40,000 available, which was for me like my quote unquote play money to get this going, get the right experience, et cetera, et cetera. And pretty much from the word go, I was just investing in, in ads, whether I knew what I was doing or not, just to get experience. But here was my thinking. I knew that I was going to use every penny of those credit cards and then I was going to go through a debt consolidation period with them. So I knew I was going to take my credit, do all that stuff, but I knew I was going to do that. And the reason I knew that was because I said, I'm going to spend these $40,000. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. I'm going to use that opportunity. But at the end of this, there's nothing, there's no job that I could conceive of that I could go start at the end of that if I decided to say no and then pay that debt off probably for the rest of my life. Because credit card debts, you know, interest rates are incredibly high. I'm like, I can't go start at a fifty thousand dollar a year job or a twenty thousand dollar a year sales job and work my way up and pay this debt off realistically. It's just not realistic. The only way out of this cavern is to make this online thing work and work big and get myself out of debt as quickly as possible. So for me, I literally felt like it was this or, or nothing else, like this or death. And I'll describe it like that often. So it's interesting because I remember the switch going off. And I remember how I would work with intense focus. I mean, I still do, but like, I remember that intense focus, that like super drive that I never felt before that knowing that I'm going to get this done. And, and even with like anybody, it, people could doubt me. I didn't even care to what level they doubted me. It just had no impact on what I was doing. None. Yeah. And I, I never had that experience before in my life. Yeah. So I think the takeaway for everyone is here, like, we said this before, when you do that scorched earth policy, like there is nowhere to turn back to, you're scientifically, you know, it's being proven that that gives you the biggest mojo. Like having that back door, like I'm going to try this, that's the kind of results you're going to produce. Mm -hmm. Having the it's this or nothing else or it's this or death, your brain will just start figuring stuff out. You will tap into something so powerful that you have no idea, like Guy said, where this intuition is going to come from, but you're going to know that that's a voice you want to listen to. It's warrior, it's, it's warrior mentality. Distinct. Say it again? Warrior mentality. Yeah. It's very distinct from the voice that normally nags you. Yeah. It sure. sounds different. It feels different. It almost feels like it's coming from a different part of you. At least for me, I, I tend to hear it more from my heart, if that makes any sense. Sure. Not my head. Yep. Um, it, it's a really profound thing, but I want to just bring this back to networking. And one of the biggest things that he also talks about is environment, the, the power of your environment, uh, having the ability to, to put you into these states. And I, I just want to throw this out there. Um, I think if you're not, if you're not willing to step out and reach out to these people, whether it's in a mentor capacity or in a uh, coach capacity, or whether it's just joining some sort of community or conversation or whatever it might be, you're robbing yourself of two very important things. One, the ability to grow faster, I think in group, um, the ideas that we've had, right? Like when we talk to certain people, even in a completely different industry, we'll hear them and we'll be like, holy crap, you're doing what? And then that gives us an idea. And then our brain goes off into this thing and we're like, okay, well, here's how we're going to do it in our business. That's one. Two, the beauty of having a mentor or being in such a community is that you have access now to what I call like a one degree of separation to anyone that you need in your life. Like honestly, there's not a single person on the planet that I can think of that I'm not literally one request away from being introduced to. And I'm talking people like Richard Branson, uh, Tim Ferriss, uh, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, like I'm, literally one degree now from all these people only because we've done the work to put ourselves in those situations. Sure. Right. And my thinking on it is this, if you surround yourself with those kind of people, 
Do you think there's any other outcome than you becoming one of their peers, like becoming someone that is at their success level or, you know, whatever success level you want? Uh, there isn't because that community will build you and mold you into that. And so, yes, the technical stuff is great. Yes, the mindset stuff is uber, uber important. But if you're going the lone wolf route, I'm telling you right now, you are setting yourself up for a very long, mostly painful, uh, unnecessarily painful, I should say, journey. Yeah. And we're guilty as, uh, as anybody. I think the only difference for us is the training that we had for a decade plus. Uh, I mean, yesterday for me was, uh, or this, right now, this last week was my 11th year since uh, Landmark Forum, believe it or not. And, um, you know, so it, we had ongoing training on how to basically become an un unstoppable human being. It's not something I knew naturally how to do. I don't think Elon made a little bit of a different take, but definitely not, not to the level of training took you, I'd imagine. But I think what, um, what you just said is really smart. Uh, and I think what you start seeing is that masters, and I think ultimately that's what it is. You put yourself in a company of people who are in pursuit of mastery of something. And masters, it's like most people who are not pursuing it see mastery as a destination. Like when I know X, I've become a master. Like I have a black belt. I promise you, people who have black belt, it's like for them, that's like the bottom rung of where just getting started in the yeah. world of karate or, or jiu-jitsu or karate, whatever, however you say it. Um, you know, and I think that's the thing we've noticed is we're at our peak when we're spending time with people in pursuit of mastery and people who are in pursuit of mastery, know other people in pursuit of mastery who know other people in pursuit of mastery, who know other people in pursuit of mastery. And that's why you can get so close to people like Richard Branson and have it be a phone call away because it's, it's really pretty much just, the, just the same. And, and I think that's the, that's the recognition. That's why money stops being why I'm talking to you. That's why I don't have gray hair stops being a reason not to talk to someone where in like the finance world and the insurance world until you have gray hair, until you're wrinkly and bald and your balls are touching the water is when, <laughs> people, is when people start getting interested in your wisdom and your advice, because that's their sign that you know something where in this world, it's not that way. It really is not that way. Yeah. So I want to just give you guys a tip. Like as we wrap this up, I, I just want to give you a tip on how to go about building these relationships, right? Because there's a very wrong way, which most people, when they start, they do. And there's a very right way, which actually works. So I'll start with the wrong way. The wrong way is, hey, so-and-so, can you help me? Right? Like, you reach out. They don't know you from a hole in the wall. And what you're asking is for them to stop whatever they're doing. And you can imagine all these people are very, very busy. And... Asking them to help you, whether it's, you know, look at a product or look at a website or help you launch your service or whatever it might be, right? Like, why? Always come from how can I add value to this person's life? Who can you think of to connect them with? Like one of the easiest ways to, to become really good at this is figure out someone that you want to be around, figure out who you can introduce them to that would add value to their lives, even if you can't. Right. Like one of the things that was very powerful that that happened with Brian is like right away, I'm, I'm asking him questions. What his business model is, what what his ideal client is. And in my brain, I'm going through my Rolodex and going, who can I connect him with? Who can I connect him with? Who can I connect him with? Right. And like within 15 minutes, I thought of two people that would literally love to be connected with him. And right away, I was like, hey, I have so-and-so, how do I connect them? Right away, right? Email, cell phone number, blah, blah, blah. We exchange it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like invited to his office. So come from the perspective of what value can you add to them? Who can you put into their circle? How can you help their business? Because people remember who put two and two together, right? Like, look at your life. If so-and-so connected you with somebody and that's made a difference in your life somehow, you remember very, very distinctly who introduced you to that person. Or some teacher that made a difference for you in high school or in college or whatever. Anything. Yeah. And so don't go to these people asking like, help me. Ask, how can I help you? Who can I introduce you to? Something like that. And I guarantee you that's a very, very different conversation than the way that most people do it.
the old the old JFK line. Ask not what you can do, what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. It's kind of the same thing, both relationships, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, brother. So I know this was kind of like a a strange remote virtual beer talk. We we'll miss you. Yeah, I know. High five. <laughs> um, but I think that the message was 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 good, and and I think that uh, people will get a ton of value from this. So virtual beer talk for now. And we'll see each other real soon, my man. All right, man. Cheers. Cheers, brother. Ding. Later, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on this week's Performance Enhancing Podcast. We've taken this pep talk and created a custom action guide so you know exactly what action steps to take now to grow your business. Just head over to satoriprime.com slash podcast and download it for free. Also, please leave a comment and rate this podcast on iTunes. It'll help us get the word out. Thanks for listening. Now, go and implement. We'll see you next time.